guys welcome back we have two more classes to get through on the blending course and you are graduates doesn't mean your education is over it just means you've graduated this one particular course so we're up to the to the mylar horse or the mylar i think it was an elephant it's not as easy as it looks but i'm going to simplify it the best i can for you so I'm going to give you an idea of where we're going to go, and then we're going to break it down. This is the one that I'm working on right now. And it's a lot of fun to do. But before you could do anything like this, I'm going to teach you how to do just a round mylar balloon. You're going to take anything that's round and a hard pencil and just make a circle. Very easy. Now we're gonna make it kind of look like Mylar. And Mylar are not latex balloons, so you're not gonna just have a round ball. They have folds in them. A round Mylar balloon is flat, not like a rounded latex balloon. It's flat and then its seams are um, pressed together. So you're gonna take your pencil, okay? And we're gonna make the outside of that balloon now, you start off with a round one, and then you're going to end up erasing that. You're going to take your pencil, and you sort of make it go like a flower on the edge. Just like this. Follow the circle around. Just like that. Don't make these even. Okay, they come together sort of, sometimes they're smaller, sometimes they're longer. It's irregular. And you're going to follow that going around the whole entire balloon. Just like that. Looking a little bit more like a Mylar balloon. Then you're going to take the end, wherever it is, and you're going to sort of make a triangle. When I was working on the horse, I didn't really put in the end ones because when you make them into an object, you kind of tuck those ends in. But if you're just making a balloon, you're going to have this. And sometimes it has like a hole on the bottom and you can put a string there. But that's like final details. There's going to be sort of like an inner ring. And it's irregular shaped. This is going to be where the balloon starts to flatten out. You're going to sort of come in. So it's going to sort of look petal like or flower like. Not too difficult. Now, on the edge over here, okay, you're going to make little folds, but the folds are kind of, just put guidelines. And you're going to add more of them, but just guidelines going around so you can see where you're going with this. Look how easy that is. And now we're ready to add some color. With all drawings, once you're happy with your sketch, you're going to get out an eraser and you're going to lighten up your lines. And they should be about as light that you could see them, but you, they're not going to interfere with your picture and your color. Okay, so that should not interrupt what we're doing or show through. Now, you're going to pick out four pencils. You're going to get out a white. You're going to get out an analogous combination. And I chose aquamarine and light aqua. You can choose any analogous colors. You have to just make sure your undertones are the same. Now, I gave you all those cards in the book and all your analogous combinations. You can use any one if they're already written down for you. 
So that's the combination that I'm choosing to use today. You're going to need a black and you're going to need a white. If you're using an inexpensive set, at least use a Prismo color white. My choice for whites is Holbein white, but they're very hard to get. My second choice is um, Derwent Chinese white drawing pencil. And those are the two that basically I stick with. They're very soft white and um, opaque. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my highlights and where I'm going to put them in. Easier if you choose a balloon to use as a guide. You don't have to do exactly that balloon, but just as a simple guide, and I have one right here. And you could pick any Mylar balloon off the internet. And I'm going to start putting down some of my highlights there and then we have some highlights going over here then there's some highlights on the edge it doesn't go completely around the balloon it goes mostly around and it goes right under where the where the seam is just like that. And let's see, it has some white down here. I'm not following this balloon completely because this balloon was just a little bit washed out and I wanna make it a little bit brighter. But that's enough pure white for right now. We'll add more in later. I'm gonna get out the lighter of the two pencils and I'm gonna start putting in my first layer I'm going to avoid coloring over the highlight right now. We'll blend that up a little bit later. Now, if you look around on the internet, you could see you could do these in the shape of a number. You can do these in the shape, and I am, of a balloon animal right here. Just practice the round one, and then maybe practice a long one before you even try doing the horse. I'm actually going to put in a couple more. And I'm going in between those highlights, not covering them up. Okay, while I was doing that first layer in the middle, I also added some wider whited uh, highlighted areas and that's very simple to do the brighter the white the higher the shine and I'm going to then get out my darker of the two which is the aquamarine the middle is the um, light aqua and I'm going to start darkening up my edges my edges going around are going to be very dark Okay, and I'm going to do that going around the whole entire balloon. Now that I got my edges done, I'm going to use my black and not going around a heavy line, but just in little areas that go in, I'm going to start darkening it up. And this is going to give my balloon a hard edge. So it looks like it's standing off the paper. Right now I'm using a Prismacolor, but I'm using a barrel. And the barrel is a little bit harder than the Prismacolor Premier. It's just in the black. It's okay. But if you have a harder wax pencil or an oil pencil, it works out really nice. For those who don't know what a barrel pencil is, um, barrel is an old Prismacolor. It started out as Eagle. That's what Prismacolor was. And then they switched company names and they went to barrel. So I happen to like the barrel black. So when I can get them, I, I get them. They're not all that hard to find, but I have... 
quite a few of them. See, the one thing good about pencils is they don't go bad. This is probably from the 1950s, and the pencil is still good today. After it was barrel, it went close to the 1970s, probably around the 1970s, it turned over to Sanford. So those are all Prismacolor, and then they came out later on with Prismacolor Lightfast, and then the Premier's. Just a little history on Prismacolor. And I'm going to start darkening up the edges. Now, I'm not making a hard line. My hands are working very soft, especially with first layer. And try to avoid your white area so you can keep that as white as you can. Since those are detail lines, that's what you want your an oil pencil for. If this takes you a couple tries, don't even stress about it. And you guys don't like see what goes on the floor <laughs> in my craft room when I'm drawing. Whenever I'm like working out like a step by step like this, it takes me several tries. Sometimes it, it hits the nail the first time. I know some people, oh, I had to do it two, three times. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> and? Especially when it's a new technique. You got to wait for yourself to have that happy accident where all of a sudden it works. And then it just happens. Why I chose to teach you the Mylar balloon is because while it's got like where your lights are supposed to be, it's not that strict because your lights could be coming in from anywhere. After this course is over, then the hard work begins. Then you don't have as much artistic freedom. Now, what is she talking about? You will see. The next step in your artistic growth, when we take the training wheels off of you and you become real artists, you see what's happening to it? Looking more and more like a mylar balloon, huh? And it's just layer after layer. And you can see it's taking me a long time. And it's just starting to come up now where it's taking on that mylar look. Some areas will be whiter than others. Like I, I want to fade like on here. I did my first layer with the white. And now I'm not going to do the whole thing white. Like, I'm not going to go on to the whole thing. I'm going to just do other layers so it gets bright in one area and then it sort of fades. And you can see it starts looking good. But your white doesn't stay bright, bright in every area that you do. Okay, I'm going to switch you on hyperlapse. Now I want to bring in my black pencil. Actually, I've been bringing in my black. And this is where you're going to make it look real shiny. So you can see that it's starting to really pop. And it pops when you bring in that black pencil. Don't be covering up your white. Leave your white as bright as you can. I also put a slight layer of black on the bottom here. Now we already know what's the bottom of something. Okay, we always turn that a little bit darker. I'm getting to the point where I'm now working my pencil a lot harder. And I wanna make sure everything is blended up properly. And some areas are gonna to start to burnish, although this paper is 
not ready to give out on me yet. In February, Jackson's is going to have the White Holbein's. And you guys better get there before me because I'm going to buy that place out of the whites. <laughs> That's my favorite pencil. The last time I bought, I bought like over 10 of them. And I think I have one or two left. I found some nubbies the other day that I didn't realize I had. And for you new people, the nubbies are when they get like stumpy. And this is a burnisher. I rarely, if ever, this is a Derwent burnisher. Almost never use it. I don't want to put in too much more color. But I want to get it all burnished. You will probably see me using one of these maybe once a year, if ever. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of Posca right in there just to lighten it up really well. Never just put down Posca and not blend it in. It's a paint, so it's going to give you those awful hard lines if you don't. And I always just use my finger. I guess you can use a brush. I always tap it down. Okay, guys. I think that's about as shiny as I'm going to get. Every time I say, oh, I'm done. So, once you can do one of these and you like the way it looks, um, of course you could put a shadow in there too. I'm not going to put too much of a shadow because my light source is coming from the front, sort of hitting here. So there would be a little bit of a shadow there, but it's up to you on how you're, you want your lighting to be. Then I'm going to put the occlusive shadow in, a little bit darker. And that's a C1 Copic that I do my shadows in. I do C1 through C3 and W1 through W3. And this is the sketch line of markers. They're about $8 a piece on an average, but you can absolutely do better than that in price. Um, use that as a starting point. Use coupons, do sales, but you should own a couple of Copics. Not too many. You don't have to, you know, buy out the store, but it just, it does help. And you can get fancy. You can put a knot in there. You have fun. So now that you can do the balloon, you can move on to the pictures from the book. So I'm sorry I didn't get to do this picture from the book because I really wanted you to be able to do the basics. Let me see your balloons. You can put them in the Facebook group. Any of my mods can help you and I'm bouncing in and out of there all the time. If you have any questions for me, my email is always open to you. It's in the description box below. If you haven't taken this course yet, I recommend it. We're in our second to last class, but all the classes are in the book and online. And you can find that on my Etsy shop. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye and we have one more class, and that's going to be a fun one. Not too difficult. Kind of along this line, but a lot more fun. So I will see you in our next class. Take care. Bye-bye.